Buffalo, Stanton and the Miami Marlins travel to New York to face the Mets. If right field towards the corner, no! The pregame's at 3.30 Eastern, followed by first pitch at 4.30. Saturday on ESPN Radio. SVP and Rosillo, the podcast. Hey, it's SVP and Rosillo. Appreciate you checking out the podcast. Tim Duncan was sensational. We look at his career and try to find some type of comparison. What are you more likely to remember from Blake Griffin's night in Game 2? How great he was with the triple-double or the fact that he says he cost his team the game? PJ Carlissimo with thoughts on that. My one big thing on the hookup. You either have one or you are one. Ryan proves to be a comic book nerd. We talk about Rick Carlisle and Rondo. At least Carlisle was honest. Thoughts on the Hardy suspension. Isn't this what everybody wanted? And apparently I talk like an English person. It was an accident, but it, it happened. I don't know why. Podcast starts now. SVP and Rosillo. Shouts to my folks in D.C. It was good to be with you last night after a, a bit of a, a, a struggle to get out of the gate. Literally. It's good to get down there and spend some time with some friends. Uh, support my uh, my buddy's charity event. It's called uh, Charity Off the Hook. And uh, good to see the folks down there. Good to be back here. Thankfully, I was able to catch the best game of the night last night, which was the Spurs and the Clippers. And, look, we could talk about all the different things, but to me there's two there's two headlines that oppose one another. There's Tim Duncan and what he did, and then there's Blake Griffin. And are you going to remember the fact that he had a triple-double? Are you going to remember the fact that he screwed up in the end? Let's start with Duncan. Yeah, let's start with Duncan, because Duncan was the reason why not only the Spurs win, but they were able to keep up with the Clippers. And they even had 10-point leads a couple different times. But you figure no Parker, the Achilles thing, so he's out with about four minutes to go. You have the foul trouble with Ginobili, so he fouls out of the game. And Duncan was flawless. I mean, he couldn't miss. Granted, he had some misses there in the fourth quarter, but for the most part, he was so tough in the post, Scott, there really wasn't anything you could do with him. No, and it's just it's it's this reminder that he still exists, and he still exists at, at this advanced plane. There aren't many guys that do what he does the way he does it. There aren't many true posts that there's not a whole lot of not a whole lot of sizzle as I've said about the Spurs collectively forever all cake no icing that's this guy's game and still still doing it at this level you're right they don't I mean without Parker that's a top five point guard man how you get how you get <laughs> they don't they don't have a shot without him and you tweeted something that's that's true and I find it really interesting about this team it's the whole sum of the parts bit as great as he was in this one they could win game three, and he could have 12 and feel invisible. But the fact that he's capable, still capable, of that level of excellence is is mind-boggling. I can't think I can't think of a really good comparison. We might do this a little bit later, but you, you have to use Brady as a comp here. Yeah. And I was thinking about Jeter, although you know, he's not playing anymore. Yeah. And Kobe. You're going to have people going Kobe or Duncan and that kind of thing. And maybe we'll do kind of the Duncan thing a little bit more a little bit later in the show. But it's so true that I don't know if he's more preserved. Now, he's preserved because it's a great system. He's got a great coach. The guy gets it. He doesn't seem to ever get in trouble. Now, what's the worst thing about Duncan, that he's boring, that he complains to the refs? Okay, I'll take it. Complain. Compl he complains kind of a lot. Yeah, but you know what? There's a lot of worse stuff out there. True. Okay? So you want to yell at jo You want to not like Joey Crawford? I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. I'm on team, your team. You're, okay? in, fr you're in front so, of him in so, that line. So, you know. When you think about how he's been able to keep this going, a lot of it's him changing his own body type. Bigger guys, as they get older, some of them just allow themselves to get bigger, and he made sure he lost weight all the time. I was I was looking at his rebounding rate. His rebounding rate, if you look at per 36 minutes, so you prorate everything, you say if this guy plays 36 minutes a game, his rebounding rate this year is the same as his rookie year, and it's basically been the same for 18 seasons. But I thought he was done several years ago with this whole deal. What do you always talk about? Split. Big men and feet. It's like that's a horrible combination. The idea that he's able to have this, it's like a fifth act in a play. It's its its a third encore in this guy's career. It's, it's staggering. So I don't know if, when you think of other stars, the focal point, right, that guy who represents his franchise, do they get worn out because they try to then carry their team when the rest of the talent is as good around them? You know, is Kobe getting hurt because he's trying to do it all on his own and he doesn't have a support system in place? Or is Kobe just getting hurt because we're talking about a high school kid and the thousands and thousands of minutes? I don't know that the, the answer is, is something we come up with today, but I do believe there's something to be said that with Duncan, that as great as he can be, and he showed it again last night, 
he hasn't had to be that guy all the time, and that's really rare for somebody who's still, I think, a star in the league and somebody that, when he's at his best, is, is basically unstoppable. That wasn't bad defense against Duncan last night. Well, he's playing against one of the best defenders in the league. Afterwards, Greg Popovich. Respect the game. On his uh, <laughs> power forward slash center. Call him what you want. Tim Duncan was great last night. Tonight, you know, he was spectacular. Uh, he continues to amaze me in the things that he's able to do. He's just a really committed, competitive guy. It's just, it always, he always comes to play, and uh, tonight he got some shots to fall and, and did a great job for us. We're presented by Progressive Insurance, creators of the Name Your Price tool. Choose from a range of coverage options. Pick the price that works for you. It's SVP and Rosillo. As great as Duncan was, Blake Griffin had a better stat line across the board. One more point, one more rebound, seven more assists. Had a triple-double, and yet, and yet, what are you likely to remember? That or the end of the game? Griffin, well, his answer speaks volumes. That game's pretty much 100% on me. I uh, got the ball and... And uh, up two, you know, I needed to take care of it, I needed to get a good shot or try to get fouled and turn it over. So um, the game's on me. Is he right? Yeah. If they don't win this series, you're going to remember that. Blake's going to have to carry that around until the time he can win in the playoffs. That last possession know. in particular. The last oh, possession the right, in, in regulation. Regular, yeah. You're up two and you 13 get. 13 seconds left. And it's a switch. And who's on him? Bellinelli. He just lost it, too. It wasn't because it was defense. It wasn't because of the double team he didn't see. He just the ball. Flew out of his hands, and he had the other one in overtime where you're right, he went into the corner. He had Danny Green on him, I think, and then he just lost it completely uh, and then threw it out, and then it ended up being Boris Diaw intercepting that one for his fifth turnover. And he was so good last night, but those are the things that stick with you. I, you know, I'm, I'm not bringing up Chris Paul again to defend my guy here, but Chris Paul is not good in the playoffs because of what happened in Oklahoma City. No one looks at any of the numbers. It's just what happened in Oklahoma City last year. So... That's going to hang on Blake unless they win this series. If they win this series, no one will care. There's that shot after a run out in overtime when Patty Mills, who was phenomenal last night. The back-to-back threes to end the quarter just out of nowhere. Filthy. But there's that moment where Paul, in a fit of absolute rage and despair, just stomps on the court like a little kid. And as he does that, I'm thinking, man, I immediately think of you, and I immediately think of this back and forth you and I have had about him in the playoffs, and I think this loss happened to a team he plays for, and he had 21-7-8 and eight last night, and the outcome has nothing to do with him. They didn't lose because of Chris Paul. No, and that's why I sent up my, my, my jerk tweet of, wow, Paul's non-clutchness leads to Blake turning ball over twice. It's infection, you know, this kind of stuff, and it's all sarcasm because he just – you watched last night, and I see Chris Paul have a really good game. And, I agree. And, and it's on him. And the reason he's stomping is that it is one of the most basic things in basketball. Be the last guy in half court to not let anybody get past you. Get back on defense. If I'm going, you have to stay. And that's why Paul was mad, because it is it is basketball 101. You learn it at the first level. And granted, mistakes are made no matter how good you are. But in that spot, to then have the turnover lead to – open bucket at the other end, that's why he's freaking out. I ran back to Mills layup like five times because he was like a little kid who was playing. Double with, stomp. Who was playing. No, I'm talking about I'm talking about Mills. Well, Paul was mad. Oh, I, Mills, he, when he took off. Mills was running. You could almost hear in his head him thinking like, I got to shoot now. If I don't shoot now, they're going to block it into the band, man. There's no band in the NBA, but you know what I mean. Like you could see him running and trying to shoot as he was running because even though he had a three-step lead, the desperation of everybody that's on the floor, there's like five Clippers running 100 miles an hour to get back there. God, that was such a great game. Redick, who was on with us this week, had a three that's halfway down that would have tied it. We might have even gotten a double overtime. The NBA's first round hasn't been great this series, and now at 1-1, now, now it's got the chance to just be like a Rocky movie. Clippers have to show some toughness, though. That's really what you look at here. Because with the Spurs, I'd imagine even if you're a good team, and the Clippers haven't had any success, real deep success in the playoffs, that there has to be a little lingering doubt. And the worst team to doubt yourself against has to be the Spurs. Because think about the pieces they're missing. Ginobili fouls out. The hack of Jordan thing was brutal to watch, but he missed a bunch of those free throws, but yet they still, the Spurs, blew that lead. And Duncan was the one. Well, you know what? We've got to mention Kawhi Leonard just real quick, because Kawhi had buckets that just silently happened throughout the entire night, and then the next thing you know, he's over 20. So he was a big part of the win, too. Defensive player of the year, he was named uh, today. 
over Draymond Green. It was a conversation about who it should be. I, either one feels like a, a, a proper answer. SVP and Marcelo. So yesterday, the Greg Hardy news comes down, suspended for the first 10 games of the 2015 regular season. The Cowboys took something of a flyer. It was seen as very little risk because so much of the salary was tied to him being on the 53-man uh, roster for games. So this this will cost Hardy a lot of potential money. It doesn't. It does. It it hurts the Cowboys if they were banking on having this guy on the field for the first 10 games. The, the, the Cowboys apparently, if you, based on all the different intel that you read, they were expecting something, but they thought maybe for six at the most, it ends up being 10. They'll appeal it. I don't know what's going to happen with that. And you're right. They knew something was coming. And I'd imagine, you know, the team would work with the league that way. If we sign Greg Hardy, what could we be looking at? And the way the contract is structured, he could have made $13 million, but there's about $9.5 million that doesn't seem like he's going to make it if the 10-game suspension holds up. So I think what we're left with here is we go, the world is different from where it was a year ago after the Ray Rice thing, and I think that's better. I think it's better that the world has looked at this stuff more harshly and that the penalties are more harsh. But now we have Goodell, who with this group, and it was three females that he worked on with this investigation and consulting and what he thought would be a reasonable um, suspension, even though the first offense in the new get tough policy is supposed to be six games. He's just like, look, I'm handing him ten. We're looking at him missing 25 games over two years. So isn't this what everybody wanted? That's where I get confused. That's where I really get confused, Ryan. And it, it, it feels in a way to me to be self, to be uh, financially punitive because he got his money last year. And, and the irony being that the money he got last year he likely used to pay off the woman that he abused, and he did. I mean, he was convicted of it. The appeal, she doesn't show up because she got money. So there you go. And it, it feels it feels retroactively punitive and financially punitive because he got his money last year, so you ensure that the guy's not going to get all his money this year. And when you say, isn't this what everybody wanted, I thought so. I thought when the mob formed after Ray Rice and it was only two games and then we we saw what we saw and then people were were, were furious because Goodell's tone deaf etc. And then they actually spend two months and, quote, the league determined there was sufficient credible evidence that Hardy engaged in conduct that violated NFL policies in multiple respects with aggravating circumstances. Now, Mort, and I respect Mort as much as anybody here, I, I don't know if he or others were, were caught up on the semantics that, that there were certain words that weren't used. Never did I read in this statement by the league domestic violence. What they use is conduct detrimental and violations under the personal conduct policy, whether it's the current or its predecessors. In other words, the policy in previous years. So the NFLPA, which is going to appeal this on Cardi's behalf, they've won a couple of rulings, arbitration cases, with Ray Rice and with Adrian Peterson because it was trying the, the league, Roger Goodell, trying to apply the new policy under the old terms. Well, that's what the league looks like they're trying to do. They're trying to do an end around by not even mentioning domestic violence and saying that under the personal conduct policy, they would have had these powers anyway. Whatever the case of the semantics are, read the language of what, of what they believe took place, or what I shouldn't say they believe, what they know took place, and what he was accused and convicted of. And Threw her in her bathtub, threw her on a couch with automatic weapons on it, choked her, hit her up against the wall, you know, I'm going to kill you, and apparently faked the 911 call to try to cover up the one that was made about him. It's ugly. And it's really ugly. The hard conversation to have, though, Scott, is where you go, well, why not 50 games? You know? And then you go, well, wait a minute. That's too much. Oh, it's domestic violence. Listen to what he did. And what I always try to do with these things is balance what is right, what is progress? Because we've clearly seen progress with punishment from the NFL, which, again, was every everybody wanted this. But then I struggle with what is the line where you go, well, this is actually unfair to the person that everybody hates today. The pendulum swings, right? The pendulum swings, and it swings drastically in the other direction when people feel like two games, not enough. Well, now I'm going to do this. And then that leads to some folks, uh, and, and, you know, a, a, a guy in a show I respect, and Levitard, and I, don't, I, I just don't get this point. I just I don't, and I don't get what the disconnect is here. Roger Goodell botched that whole Ray Rice thing, and we just gave him yet more power. While everyone's applauding, yes, punish the domestic abusers. A guy who couldn't be trusted with the power in the first place 
almost was fired, right. had a media storm around him unlike any that we've ever seen in sports. But, Dan, are we okay with more power as long as he's using it correctly and in an organized I'm not. fashion? An organized I'm not. fashion. I'm not. I'm not okay with giving that man. I do not believe that he, he is to be trusted with yet more power when he's going to make up the rules as he goes along. And one of the things that he's doing here is he is correcting what he did incorrectly by double punishing Greg Hardy, by coming down with a penalty that doesn't have a precedent. Who, who, what power did we, who's we, and what power did we give him? The, the, he's empowered by the league. And he heard everyone say he was tone deaf the last time. Right, because he went by the original policy. Okay, it's two days, and then we saw a video. So the world... Everything changed after we saw the video with Ray Rice. So I, I understand what Dan's saying, but I think he already had that power. Right. I don't think it's new. I mean, and the thing about suspensions being inconsistent, welcome to the world. Okay? I mean, I, people get suspended here. Yeah, it's it's not always consistent, and people complain about it, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm okay it seems like they almost just applied common sense here with the NFL, where they go, the guy got paid, but he didn't get to play. So guess what? He's not getting paid this time because this guy did something horrible. We don't even know if we want him in the league. But he's not making his money. So let's apply common sense here. Let's show that we are going to, quote, get tough as the title of their new policy. We'll have females' voices heard throughout this process and this investigation. We will give the public everything they want. And by the way, nobody elected Roger Goodell. The 32 guys that make billions of dollars put him in front to take all the bullets for them, for their league, and they're happy about it. And he gets paid because everybody's making a ton of money. So I don't – is anyone mad today? I, I just thought everybody got what they wanted after all the conversation we had about demanding, not you and I specifically, but I thought everybody that said this guy should be fired because he's tone deaf and did this, this, and that – I thought those people won when they heard this yesterday. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. That's a that's an, an axiom that uh, many apply to cir circumstances. And I, I Dan's thought about power. I mean, I don't believe that that, that he's that uh, Goodell's been given any more. It felt that he was given a mandate by the angry mob to do more, to do better, to listen, to think about what is an appropriate level of punishment. And Are you okay with the extra 10 games? Are you okay that it's we're, we're at 25 possibly here of no appeal? When? Yes. You see what I'm saying? But, I mean, you yes, know, it was but, 35 okay, you know, and then you start going, how do I do this? Let me just, yes, I'm okay with it, and I understand whether it's Levitar. I feel the same as Dan in this in this way. Right, because there's some I agree with, too. Well, right? we, well because we – if we don't, if we're making it up as we go along, but that, man, that's life in many circumstances, is you're figuring it out as it goes. And it, it's very little cookie cutter. It's like, let's see. All right. Well, he pushed her into a bathtub. Like, does that fit into the two or the three game? Oh, well, there's, there were the guns. Ooh, there was. And I'm not yeah. trying to be, I'm not trying to be smug and make jokes about this. But, I mean, I'm being serious to the degree that, okay, what is a sufficient punishment? And they did their due diligence here. And they, they found that what they believed was sufficient and credible that was alarming to them. And the guy got all his money last year. And I do believe that that's in play here. And so you end up with more than two, not a whole season. And is two, would eight have been better to somebody? Would have been would have felt better if it was six? And then would that not have felt enough to others? I don't know. You're, look, life is not a buffet of satisfaction for everyone. Not everyone in. You don't get to the end of the line. Everyone's like, I like every. Everyone will like everything that was offered. Nope, it just doesn't work that way. I don't know how you would do it. I don't know how you would write down a list and go, okay, here's a code red, here's a code orange, everything under here is, and you'd be like, okay, well, what if it was a second orange, though, plus a green? You know, it just, I'm with you. SVP and Rosillo. No, but no, for real. PJ Colissimo on SVP and Rosillo on ESPN Radio and ESPN News is that we, I have to, I have to, Fight the, the conversation that goes on off air to just stop for just 20 seconds so I can welcome you on the air. It's look, we just like talking hoop, man. And you'll be you're going out to what? You got Portland, uh, Memphis, Portland Saturday night. Right on. Uh, and you do a great job. Uh, you're kind. Uh, you do a great job. No, look, it's you're good at what you do, which is why we love having you on here. We started talking about Duncan. Uh, when you go back to when his feet were wrong and and it looked like uh, he's done. It would have been fine if it was done at that point. It would have been a hell of a career, a Hall of Fame career. This is like an extra act. I said earlier, it's like the, the fifth encore uh, of a great band that, that, where they're, he's as good now as he ever was. How? How? Does it blow your mind? Well, it, it does, but it's it, same thing. I mean, you know, 
privilege is the word, uh, privilege to work there for five years and work with him. I mean, he put three rings on my fingers. And Pop says it all the time. People think they're kidding. I think it was last, yesterday's or last night's press conference. He said, Timmy's the one who pays me. And he's, he, Pop's only half kidding. Um, <laughs> but he's amazing because he's such a good – the two things he is that, that – um, forget the talent. He's such a good pro. He takes care of his body. He comes to practice every day. He makes sure in the off season he doesn't get – too far out of shape and the other thing is he's such a great he's not a good teammate he's a great he's the ultimate teammate guys love being on a team with him from a guy like Manu and Tony that's been his teammate for 12 or 14 years to some kid who comes up on a 10 day and you check into a hotel late at night and you see like the little clicks going out for meals the way it is with every team and here's Timmy with the 10 day guy taking him out or taking the, like the rookie out he's just he's unbelievable and he's as good as as advertised, it's not phony. It's the, the, the side of him people don't see. Great sense of humor, uh, sarcastic. I mean, he's great. I mean, he just he kills me. I mean, fourth or fifth. And part of it was half truth, but he would say to me like, "What is it that you do again?" Like the fourth or fifth year I was there. He says, "Like, you, there's you have a role with the team. Like, what what is it that you do?" Um, but he's absolutely the best. What and did you do with him? <laughs> very, like, well, the reservations. Uh, Pop didn't like the golf, so I didn't have to do that. That was part of my job in 92 with the Olympic team, the golf with Michael and Charles and uh, the, the late Chuck Daly. But I don't have to do the golf with that. A lot of wine and a lot of uh, restaurant reservations. Excellent. Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. The other thing, though, that people talk about it, and they're talking about the surprise now. He was sixth in the league this year. I think he was 15th in rebounds, 13th in field goal percentage. Playing under 30 Sixth minutes. in block shots. <laughs> playing under 29, yeah. 28 and change. Like, what, what were people watching for? And played 77 games. The whole league missed the whole year with injuries. He played 77 games. It's amazing. Less than 29 a game. He's he basically, I was amazing. going through it again this morning. I just remind myself of it. But he hasn't really missed any time other than just being sat down. He's always about 70 games. The rebounding rate's the same this year as it was his rookie year 18 years later. How about the, it, it didn't look like he was going to miss a shot the way he started. Then in the fourth quarter, he said, well, it's too bad. But they had to play in big minutes because of the injuries, TP not being there. Mine are gonna, they ran out of gas. They go to overtime. It's too bad. You know, they're not going to win it. He comes alive in the overtime and, and does more. And Patty Mills was ridiculous. But what a great game. I, I hope people stayed up or whatever you call it when you when you tape the thing and watch the next day because that was it's early, but that was the best game in the playoffs by a mile so far. VCRing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, PJ Carlissimo <laughs> in the studio. So as far as this series is concerned then, which way are you going with it? Because I'm scared still because of TP. Because of, if Parker's not somewhat healthy, not 100%, but somewhat healthy, they're in trouble. And also splitter, right? Like I'm, people are sleeping on him. In some matchups, they don't need Tiago against some teams. This team, they need Tiago splitter badly. Missed the last six games of the regular season. Saw how winded he was last night. A, a lot of rust for just for a couple of weeks. I think they need him healthy. They absolutely need Tony Parker on the floor, even if not 100% Tony Parker and 80%, or we got to dust off Corey Joseph or Manu. The one thing, Manu was out last night that Silly Folly committed to foul out, but Manu can play a lot of point too. But um, I, I still think, I, I know technically the Spurs are supposed to have the home court now, but I, I think that uh, L.A. still has an edge. Doc's got to figure out how to get something out of his bench other than Jamal Crawford. Those guys just aren't. You can't play any better than Blake Griffin and CP are playing. And J.J., I think, is playing very well also. But some of these other guys better step up. He knows more than just what uh, wine goes with a veal. It's uh, P.J. <laughs> Carlissimo. Knows the ins and outs of the coaching profession. The OKC situation, predictable. Um, you, shake, you shake your head. Totally predictable and disgraceful. Because? Uh, because, well, first of all, because Scotty Brooks might have done one of his better, I don't want to say best, but the six years, if it was six plus since he took over for me, this was one of his best coaching jobs. To say that this year doesn't matter, K KD missed 55 games. Uh, if, if KD's healthy, they're playing right now, and they're a one or two seed. They got a chance to win a championship. And saying, well, this year didn't matter what happened this year. It, it's for the future. He deserved the right to coach this team healthy. Ibaka gets hurt in the playoffs two years ago or three. I can't keep track of years. Last year. Russell Westbrook two. two years yeah. ago. He had a team in the finals before. He's done not a good job, an incredible job. The players like playing for him. Now, big boys, we're all, we're all making a lot of money. 
Owners and GMs can do whatever they want, but they hung them out to dry 10 days ago when they started saying we're evaluating, we're trying to decide. It's over then. You can't bring him back. He's got no leverage, players, agents, those of us in the media. He was dead, but he deserved better. Uh, I, I don't think he can do a much better job. And to imply that somebody else, you know, it's like Steve Steve didn't do a good job. Stefan didn't want Mark Jackson fired, didn't make any difference. I don't think Kevin or Russell were behind this or anything at all. And whoever gets in there is going to get, if they're healthy, is getting one of the best teams in the NBA and he's going to win X amount of games and they're going to say, wow, what a great job. Scott Brooks is never going to get the chance to coach that team healthy again. And, like, how about if they still had James Harden? Like, you know, who's accountable for that? I mean, it's just wrong. Uh, I, I, I know you're upset about it, TJ. I didn't have a problem with it. Yep. And I'm wondering if there's any value. And you know the ins and outs yep. of it. I mean, you do. You work with these guys. This guy was on your staff, so I get it. But is there anything to just saying, even with the injuries, and I understand the perception that it's unfair that you go, maybe it's just time for a new voice. Or exactly. maybe it's a time to get Durant and these Westbrook on the complete same page because we're worried about whether or not they're going to stay here. Absolutely. And, again, that's that's their prerogative. I think sometimes it's a time it's time for a new GM. I never heard anybody saying that. Let's get a new GM. Let's, <laughs> get, a new, let's get a new owner. I heard that in Detroit let's, Orlando. Let's, let's, get a new, let's get a new owner. Um, I, it's, I, I don't think it's wrong. It's their prerogative. I just think – he had the players backing. I thought he did a remarkable job. Even if you, first of all, if you're going to bring him back, they shouldn't have said what they said 10 days ago. But bring him back, and you don't like the way it's going after 20 games or 25 games, uh, do it. I, I just think uh, this is like, this to me is like George Carl in Denver, Lionel in Memphis a couple years ago. Come on. What, what more can you do? You set franchise records, you win, and you make a change. Come on. Will whoever gets the job walk into a better situation there than Kerr walked into in Golden State? Significantly better. There's no comparison, in my opinion. People forget what Golden State was. We were still saying, what, a couple, two games ago, these guys haven't won a series in a couple of years. They got beat in the first round. Mm-hmm. How, you know, what are they going to do? Who would have thought he's going to put Draymond Green, Draymond, Iguodala on the bench, Lee on the bench, Draymond Green starting, uh, Harrison Barnes is starting. He's made so many great moves, but – no one, well, I shouldn't say, very few people thought Golden State was, no one thought they were going to win 67 games, was one of the teams to beat in the West this year. Everybody thought they are going to be better. Oklahoma City, if they're healthy, is going to be a top three pick next year. It's a great, great job. No, I don't think there's any comparison between last year Golden State and next year Oak City. Safe travels to the Pacific Northwest. PJ, appreciate the time. Great being with you guys. Thank you. SVP and Rosillo. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Geico presents Strange Savings Stories. Astronomers detected an interstellar transmission. It stated, Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. The implications were staggering. Was the cosmos telling us we could all save hundreds on car insurance with Geico? Or did their radar merely pick up a signal from the nearby Rufus and Clyde's morning show? We may never know. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. It's time for Scott Van Pelt's One Big Thing. One Big Thing. On ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Jameis would be great in the mafia because he's not going to rat on the hookup. He's not going to mess with his connect. He put out a statement last year that said, in a, youthful, in a moment of youthful ignorance, I walked out of the store without paying for one of my items. I realize I'm in the public spotlight. My conduct needs to be above reproach. I make no excuses for my actions. I will learn and grow from this unfortunate situation. Well, that was a lie. The truth was they had a hookup. And this is how life works. And in life, you either have a hookup or you are the hookup. I think of uh, I think of you, Ryan, when you were working back in the day at one of the bars in Burlington. You were probably the hookup. And if I were up in school there, me and my idiot friends would come in, ten of us, and we would bang one check for the course of an evening. We get that check and we just pound on that check all night. And at the end of the night, maybe it was eight bucks or maybe it was four bucks. But then you hooked us up, so then our hookup, your hookup, is us. We're going to make sure you're taken care of. It's pretty simple. Any city, any crew of guys, you know what I'm talking about because you've got the hookup, and you make sure you hook him, hook him up. It's how life is bartered. In D.C., it's lobbyists and lawmakers. 
Lobbyists use power and influence, money, booze, trips, etc., to ply favor when it comes to voting for stuff. You hook me up, I hook you up. It's, it's, it's quid pro quo, it's simple, it's understood. And at Florida State and at every single big football institution, Columbus, Madison, I could go through every conference, Los Angeles, Eugene, Fort Worth, Tuscaloosa, and on and on, everywhere. There's kids that have a hookup. Maybe it's a sub shop. Maybe they walk in and somebody can get, slide them in a, a couple extra slices. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's the jumbo soda and a sub sandwich. Palo Alto, statute of limitations has expired on this. There was a place, Stanford Steve, there had to be a place where there was a hookup. Am I right? Theoretically. Partial. Okay. And so what was the hookup at Publix? It's some dude that works in the back, and he says, hey, you can have some crab legs. And then what's the hookup for him? What do you think? A couple for the Clemson game? Maybe it's a hoodie? The crab legs don't cost the guy at Publix a dime. The sweatshirt doesn't cost Jameis a dime. The tickets don't cost him a dime. It's just the way life works. And my favorite part of this is the NCAA and Florida State have to go through this bull nonsense of saying, we're going to investigate and see if there was a violation. Hey. Hey, hey, guess what? There was. There was a violation. Because he took something, and then he gave him something. But that's how life works. So we're all adults. There's all grown-ups in the room. We get it. This is just its this is just life. It's not complicated. I had heard this when it first happened, but I'd also heard an excuse for everything Jameis did through certain channels, you go, well, this is actually what happened. Hey, this is what actually happened. And every time it was that Jameis was all right. But I never had an issue with this one because you're right. I, this is what I always kind of thought it was. But at the time, it turns into if he's the face of your franchise, if he's the guy that's making decisions, this shows poor decisions and it shows an entitlement that like, you can have some stones, but I don't know too many people that just walk into a store, grab stuff, and leave. The, the problem is you get and, and there's this and that's the video there's a subtle way to massage the hookup you need to be a little bit more casual with that maybe send a backup running back to pick some stuff up in a bag maybe what you do is you purchase one thing that costs a buck huh see kind of like you buy a round of shots but really you're kind of buying the bar but you're not buying for it the bartender's giving it to you you go in and you buy a toothbrush and the crab legs there's an exchange of something on the video no one cares you just got to understand how to work the hookup. And that's that's all this was. But now, retro, the idea that he told Jim Harbaugh, of all people, why he's there. And the whole stone crabs exchange is one of my favorite things that's happened in the last, I don't know how long. Stone crabs? That caveman look on Harbaugh's face? I don't I don't get that. I, I just don't get it. If I'm Jameis, and he can't do it because it'll make him look bad and overly crush him the next day on TV, I go, why am I talking to you about this? Is What, what pick does Michigan have? I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, okay, peace, Jed. Am I wrong about the bartender exchange with the buddies? I mean, we had we had we had hookups at every bar in DC. I mean, just that's just how it goes. And the bar owners know it's a cash business. Some guys are giving away booze, but those guys are gonna come back and we're gonna get ours and everybody's happy. We used to have guys that opened up a bar that I worked for that were a little bit older than me, but they had had been through the wars with the vets that kind of seasoned them and they used to I work at a place this, where the they, they would start the night where they'd open the register, throw 100 on it, and be like, let's grow. And I'd be like, you guys aren't even just hooking people up. You just, that's awful. And then I went to work for them, and they go, all right, Rosilla, we know, you know, you just, you know, take it easy. Don't crush us too much. And I go, hey, I'm never the steel guy. I'm the dollar drink guy. I'll give people dollar drinks. And then he'd be like, well, wait a minute. You know her? I'd be like, ah, it's just a dollar drink. Don't worry about it. And. I would give dollar drinks to sometimes people I didn't even like, but it just was understood that you were kind of in that discounted group. And then I'd take some of my tip money and make up for it. I mean, it just it all worked out. Nobody was it was going out of business. That's the best way to describe the hookup when it when it's reciprocated. It all works out. You get a couple for the Clemson game. I get some crab legs, and we all move on with our lives. SDP and Rizzo. Man, that was the best condiment. How much Rondo did you talk yesterday? Did a lot. We did. About a full segment yesterday, and then we did another segment. We had Simmons on for the final hour. So. What's, what's Simmons' take? Because, I mean, Simmons has got the, not a not a vested interest, but, I mean, he liked Rondo in, in Boston. And, and they were, Loved him. Yeah, Loved they were him. playoff Rondo, that whole bit. There were moments when he 
uh, his brilliance shine through. I, I read the article in ESPN the magazine. I, he's a compelling kid, an interesting kid. He has a hard time with the rest of the world because it's not as smart as him. But this guy's insufferable. It's one thing when you're not hitting shots and everybody likes you. It's another thing when you can't hit any shots anymore and you shoot 30% from the free throw line and you foul on purpose apparently to get out of the game. Like I can never understand of all the, the flaws that Rondo has when it's not going right, and there's so many times when it was great in the playoffs, but I never thought he'd be a guy that would basically just quit, pack it up. That's what you know, he did. I don't, I don't want to be here. So we have a fake injury, and Carlisle is my hero yesterday for answering the question the way he did. Is Rondo going to be in a Dallas jersey again? Do you expect Rondo to win a matter to you coming in? Uh, no, I don't. Good. Be honest. And all he's doing is connecting the dots in a way that is real. We know that that's the outcome. It, it's, it's done. I found this interesting, though. Carlisle just talking about this process and what he takes from it. I like Rondo. I do. And I... You know, my relationship with him was professional. You know, we learned a lot going through this, trying to make this thing work. Uh, and the fact that it manifests now, you know, with, uh, with, with there being an injury and everything, um, is something that we didn't want. I'd love, to be, I'd love to be able to just follow and say, what did you learn? Because I'm genuinely curious. Well, I read a Tim McMahon article that was on ESPN.com. It was covered Dallas sports for a while, and he, he gets into that that Carlisle had a different, difficult relationship with Kid because Carlisle was controlling and Kid's going, hey, I'm, I'm pretty good too. We'll figure this out. Kid comes into Dallas later in his career with a better resume, I believe, as his own player. Like Kid, to me, when you had him in his prime, that changed who you were as a team. Rondo, as great as he could be at times, turned into this dude who, if it was a national televised game, he tried to get 15 assists at the cost of actually running an offense. And then if it was just a Tuesday game against the Nets, he just completely didn't care. So I don't know why why he became that guy, but it seemed like in the article that I read that there were real conversations about basketball where Carlisle and Rondo did respect each other. But I don't I don't know how if you're Rondo, you're all in this Mavericks organization and think that you're going to have it your way because it, it wasn't. And now it turns to what happens in the offseason. I still think he gets paid a decent amount. I don't know if he's under $10 million or if he's over 10 I mean, we can all bash the guy right now and say he's cost himself millions and millions of dollars. It usually doesn't work that way, and it's especially not going to work that way in the NBA offseasons moving forward because teams are just going to have money to spend. And, the, and with Dirk, who I have zero objectivity because I enjoy his game and like the guy so much, but I mean, he can't stand in front of a soul and uh, on the floor defensively. Uh, Parsons is hurt. Uh, Rondo's never going to play for him again. It, it feels very much like the end. They're playing Raymond Felton over Rondo in game two. If you're Los Angeles, I get that Kobe and Rondo have something. Kobe's at the end of his line. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait for this deal. Four years. You're going to live with that. You're going to live know. with this petulant guy. He's that, a winner, Scott. He's got a ring. No, he's not. No, he's not. Yeah, you don't get it. Winners he, don't quit. Winners don't tap out. He's just like Kobe. Same mindset. All about one thing. I mean, I know what you're doing, and you're playing the role, and you're playing it well, but I'm, I'm happy to sit here and hit this back <laughs> at you with pace because, I mean, you. what bugs me is, is when you just lack professionalism, when you just when you lack this. And this is a bright guy. If you're dumb and you act like an idiot, I don't hold it against you nearly as much as if you're smart and you act like an idiot because you know better, and he does. And he just taps out. He hasn't got along with anyone. When he left Kentucky, part of the knock on him and why his draft status got hurt a little bit was that Tubby. there was a lot. Yeah, but there was even more. There was weird stuff that people said. You know, just a general lack of respect for some of his teammates, some personal stuff. Like, Ronda just did his own thing. And, you know, eventually uh, you have to get to a point in life where you go, wait, is it not everyone else and it's me? What's the common denominator in all of this? What? Wait, so you're saying, look, I, I, a vacation for my problems? You know? there's, there's a Ray Allen thing where you, you know, you, you read about Pierce talking about him, and you see that you know Ray was kind of about Ray, and I can imagine that Garnett's constant barking could get old, but Pierce is an OG man. You were with that group that you could learn a lot from, and yet problems meant building with them and with Doc. And I mean. I don't know what Carlisle is like day-to-day -day or, or a guy like Nowitzki and what that dynamic is like. But, I mean, 
there are all these different styles and different flavors, and none of them seem to be the, the thing that your spice makes better, man. So what? You're going to go to Los Angeles, and then what? Everything's going to be cool? Everything's going to be cake and ice cream? Well, well you don't understand. <laughs> Tell me. Help just, me. You're just not wired the way Kobe is. You're not wired the way Rondo is. Is that Those guys are just they're programmed. There's a DNA there. There's a winning DNA. At 2.40, I'm just going to go sit down on the ground over here. Just let you handle it with Wilbon. I'm just going to go sit down because my back hurts. I mean, it just, it's just—it's really—it's really disappointing. You cannot like him as a player, and I always thought he was—he was really good when he wanted to be good. He was special in the way, and I'm just repeating myself about Rondo. There's a lot of great things about Rondo's game, but he was never ever Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook. He wasn't Darren Williams when Darren Williams was right. He wasn't Derrick Rose. He was never any of those guys. Speaking of Darren Williams. I, I laughed last night. I was like, is anyone going to ask Lionel Hollins if that's Darren Williams' last game in a Nets jersey? Because I mean, I was thinking about watching Paul and thinking about where we are, and we've had fun with our our list and top five and who's not on it and who should be on it and Kyrie's great and blah, 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 blah. It was not five years ago. I mean, it wasn't like before HD television that the idea that Chris Paul and Darren Williams – just head-to-head, head, you had to really look at what Williams did to Paul because he gave it to him repeatedly for a while. And he had two points last night. Two. Played less minutes than Jarrett Jack. The Nets are better with Jarrett Jack running the point. And then that becomes Williams as a two-guard. And it, it ain't pretty. And he yeah. lost somebody in the baseline defensively that ended up being a huge hoop for Atlanta. Had an open look and, did, and, and missed it. That one, I don't even – that one doesn't bother me as much as the rest of the stuff where you go – when you get to a point in your career where I forget you're on the floor, wow, that's bad. Wow, 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 wow. That's Ryan's Ryan's mental break from basketball. Nets Nap game. time <laughs> keeps watching him though. He can't help it. Well, what am I going to not watch a playoff game? Yeah, I zoned out real good. I had my mind somewhere else last <laughs> night, and almost 30 minutes went by. And then I t- I quiz myself. I go, name five plays that you just saw. Like, what do they do? I, I don't know. I can't be like, oh, it's horns and this is, you know. So I, I rewound it because I realized you've been looking. Did you pass the test? No, that's why I made myself rewind it because I, I go, what has happened? 30 minutes staring straight ahead, thinking about something that has nothing to do with sports. What has just happened? You're like, the Nets, man, they did it again. Was it? They fought last night, though. I'll give it to them. They, there's certain nights where you don't see that fighting them, and, and they were pretty good. SVP and Rosillo. <laughs> ESPN Radio. With the action on the court, the diamond, or the gridiron. <laughs> Comes alive. The NBA. The San Antonio Spurs are the world champions. Major League Baseball. San Francisco Giants are the champions of the baseball world. The new college football playoff. College football playoff national the Ohio State Buckeyes. Your home for the best in sports play-by-play. ESPN Radio. SVP and Rosillo. Yes. You can get to Subway. Win, uh, you get your chance to win subs for life. Subway, we're superheroes. What if you're like a kid and you look like that's a lot of subs, man? Think about that. Like a little kid wins. What if you're Wolverine? Yeah, and you love sub sandwiches. That would be the worst thing ever for Subway if he won. Because why? Dude, are you kidding me? Wolverine? Yeah, but you... Such a noob, dude. Sorry, bro. You don't know anything about Wolverine's genetic. I just know he's got some metal stains that come out of his hand, and he's super jacked. So much more than that. What makes it happen? Rage? If that was a superpower, a lot of people would. I was going to say because I'm I'm looking at your fists and I'm trying to see where they where the where do those metal things go back into your hands? Wolverine's got that super uh, healing power as well. Right, and because of that power, he's allowed to stay. He's been alive for hundreds of years. I don't understand why. And that's why if he won sub sandwiches, he'd be like, "All right, I guess I'll get a six inch meatball again." It's only been eighty years. I thought maybe you thought he'd be able to cut the grinder better. I don't know. I was thinking about that. Really. Yeah, he'd be a great artist. Have you not watched any of the Wolverine movies? Yeah. I no, did. I haven't. <laughs> you have. No. Stanford Steve hasn't? No. Have I, you? 
Yeah. And you didn't ever pick up on that he lives forever? I'll be honest with you, the dialogue to me, like that's the kind of movie that when it's on, is that's a flip back and forther. So I'll just come back to that scene where in the woods and then there's that lady that she like, there's a fire guy and then there's a, there's a cold guy and then they fight because naturally. And then there's that woman and then there's that guy that's a battering ram. That's X-Men. Right. Well, that I saw there was there was, the Wolverine one ended up and there was this. There was He's not this, even an original X Man, dude. He's the uncanny X Man. This is my favorite on the low thing about Rosillo is he is a full on comic book geek. <laughs> not like subtle, full on. Okay, we'll just put an expiration on it though. About like I, this is all from being a kid and knowing it. I have not I've not been super locked into the storylines the last twenty years. Still got him wrapped up in still the watch all the movies. Still got him wrapped up in the uh, cellophane in a box. Well, I don't know. I wrap up money. What do you do with it? This one's a gem mint 10. Yeah. Oh. Hey, guys, let me show you my Griffey oh, rookie. Do you have the first Punisher appearance? Yes, I do. <laughs> Keep going. More. Do you, have, do you have the first new costume of, of Spider-Man? The spectacular Spider-Man? Yes, I do. It's, it's an alien costume. It started, you know, I mean. What's that one worth? Dude, in the condition I have it, I don't even know if you can price it. Secret Wars, issue eight. I could see through the glass. Outsider Mike went, wow. <laughs> I'm amazed that he's spitting knowledge like this. And you know what I found out, Outsider? Girls don't care about it. <laughs> yeah, but you put on, you put on the, yeah. you put on the, what was it called? The, 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 the game changer or something? Bring her oh, over the and lady yeah. killer. Yeah, wow. to put on the lady killer and say, hey, have you seen the... Just pour some Ciroc and put on some D'Angelo. Untitled. SVP and Rosillo. Rosillo! I have no problem with, with riding out a little bit. Did you see Montel Jordan? This is how we do it. Halftime. Clippers game last night? No, they, they couldn't get... Uh, couldn't get Jeffrey Osborne? I don't know if you know the, the guy Sulkin there, the writer from Family Guy. I don't. He tweeted out a video of it. I sent him a DM. Said so funny, and he was like, "Oh, it was, it was rough." So we're basically best friends. Wow. Yeah. So, now, are you do you guys follow each other? We do. He's a huge fan of the show. Is that oh. true or or not true? Well, you know how it is. Famous guys. We all just kind of. We're part of the same clique. Yeah. Crew. Yeah. Okay. You know what that'd be funny is like certain people that are on Twitter that are way more famous than you, but just are of an older generation and they have 12,000 followers. Like somebody from facts of life is on Twitter and they have like 11,000 and Meredith Baxter. Bernie. Yeah. You just go, you should have, you should have more. You're, you're really famous and just buy them. Like some people do. You could do that. But I thought it'd be funny just to insult them all. Like I have more followers than you. I wasn't <laughs> even on a sitcom. Hey, you would get the joke, but it would just make me look like the biggest jerk ever, which is probably something I should be used to. Tim Duncan had a good game last night. A question for you. I love questions. If you look at the bookends and everything in between, so the 18 years he's been in, and let's try to keep it to contemporaries. So even though Jeter's done, it's it's kind of the same time frame. Jeter got started earlier. But you look at a guy like Jeter. You look at a guy like Brady, Kobe even. And Simmons tweeted out a Kobe Duncan question. If you look at Duncan and all of it, not just the success, but the way he's perceived, he's talked about the the highs, the lows, has anyone done it better than Duncan? In the NBA? No, just in sports. In his time. You know, roughly. It doesn't have to be, yes, he entered the same year and is still playing. I, I couldn't come up with a list of that many guys that would even be discussed. No, I mean, there's – there's because it, it, includes, it includes so few lows. There's just – there's so few, there's such a consistency of, of greatness in there. And there's championships early and there's championships late. Fifty wins every year, forever. I mean, a guy like a guy like Elway left on a high note and did it and, and saved his best work for the very end. But so much of the early, the prime years were marked by not just losses but but the demolitions on the high on the biggest stages of Super Bowls. Um, the only finals he lost, he really shouldn't have lost. I mean, it was Miami got it and they ended up closing out the series, but. It wasn't what like LeBron and Dwayne Wade just went through. No, the they got, no. I mean, the, the, the Miami won, and full credit to them. But it was a bounce, and a pass, and a three, or they lose. 
When the Spurs won, it was scorched earth. They hammered Miami. There was zero mistake in, what, in that outcome. So is there – no. And, I mean, the, the, the Simmons thing about Kobe is really interesting because you Kobe fanboys are a, a fun bunch, man. Um, there's been a bunch of injuries in there. Talk about which career would you take. That becomes a pretty interesting conversation. Because, Kobe, when you look at basketball and that kind of in-your-face, I'm taking this thing over and I'm going to I'm gonna be a superstar. There was never any question about Kobe's star when he's playing. So you could argue Kobe was a bigger star, and that's more fun, and it's fun to be a perimeter guy. And just when you're nasty, when Kobe's nasty, it's just another level. The best wing player going. Superstar. But the worst thing you can say about Duncan, I mean, you could argue that Kobe is the biggest issue with the Lakers the last couple of years. You depend on him. He's not healthy. I don't even want to really want to get into the contract thing. But That's a huge part of it, though. You're spending so much money on a guy who's not available. Your greatest, your greatest attribute in sports is your availability. So should we give Duncan so much more credit, though, for taking a pay cut? Because if I'm just asking about who's done it better than him, I'm probably going to say Duncan. Because the worst thing we ever really say about Duncan is that he's boring and, uh I mean, that's what's that? The worst, the worst criticism is that you're not exciting enough. That's our problem, not his. Think he, about what he did last night. It was insane. It was insane. He was, and and it was it was. This part gets maybe a little bit lost because it's somewhat nuanced. It's not just that he did it. It's who you're going up against a guy in Jordan, who, actually kicks a shot right back in his face face late when it looks like. The Spurs are going to blow this lead. I expected the Spurs to win this game, not because of the zigzag or the bounce back or whatever, but because the Spurs have this they have an odd ability to lose the first game, but then they show their everything about their resolute toughness in game two. I expected them to win that game. But when they lost that lead, I thought it was done. And, you know, Jordan, D- Duncan didn't miss much except late in the fourth quarter, and it looked like the, it looked like a great game was going to get lost because of that. And then in the end, he was phenomenal again. He found some other reservoir of, of energy in the, in the overtime. So it's who he did it against last night. Since so, he entered the league, too, 56 wins that first year. They've never been under 50. And even the year that was shortened to 66 games, they went 50 and 16. Okay? And the only other season, and it doesn't count because they played 50 total games, their first championship, they went 37 and 13. And then, you know, Shaq's calling them all sorts of things, and they're not real champs. They're the WNBA champs. You know who's the champ? Is the guy who won the ring last year in his 17th season, Duncan, and still looks like the most important player for that team last night. And the hey-look-at-me moments of a star like Kobe because he's a wing and because that, those are where the true stars of our league are. Our, our league. What am I, the commissioner? The stars of the league Thanks are. Thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. That That's where they live. I just – there are moments – there are moments – for all the greatness of Kobe, and there's so many examples of it, but there's moments like that Phoenix series, you know, where the, in the playoff series like Dallas, where they're just getting shattered, you know, and you're thinking, man, this is, you, you, you're offering no resistance here. That weird last game, that game seven against Phoenix, you didn't shoot in the fourth quarter. You know, there's moments like that where you just wonder, what, what were, you, were you trying to say something in that moment? Yeah, I don't. I don't. I've never. I've never understood that game. I've never because I never could believe that you know, you're just trying to prove a point, so you're not going to shoot and you're going to lose a playoff game, so that you can be right about something. And not just a playoff right. game, a game, the, right. the last game, the game that ends your season. And, and to, to take a guy's career that's is one of the greatest we've ever seen and narrow it down to one game. That's not my goal. I, but if just, you're comparing these two guys, you got to put it all on the table. I, it's just stuff that I think about. Right. Duncan had dinner with the Orlando Magic and then decided to re-sign with the Spurs after a couple of years. Kobe spent an entire summer on the warpath going, I want out of here. And I don't want you to trade any good players for me because the team I want to go to, I want it to be good. Now, look, they got over it and they worked it out and they paid him. And it's not his fault that they paid him. And I just, I feel like the Kobe stuff with the contracts, I just can't do it because he, he explains it in a world where it goes, none of you guys understand. It's like, no, no, we all actually do understand. But would you rather, do you think Brady... Is Brady's run more impressive than Duncan's run? And it can't be as simple as one guy has four rings and the other guy has five. No. I wonder if Brady would be an answer for more people if he played for a different coach. Because I think that the anti-Belichick, anti-Patriot thing, like what's Brady really ever done wrong except defy the odds? One guy's the number one overall pick in Duncan, and the other guy was thought to be a practice squad player at best. I'm trying to think of what what do you think is harder to do, to do it in the NFL or to do it in the NBA? 
I kind of think to be a big, to still be this good 18 years later, is harder to do that than, than to be a quarterback. And I you, know that sounds crazy. But and you have to win. Wow, really? You have to, I know. You have to win it's 16. the toughest position in sports, I, I would, right? I understand that. Yeah. But. you got to win 16 games to win a ring, but there's also the wiggle room of being able to lose a game and not having it, you know. I mean, yeah, you, yeah. You think of, and, and you can so see you can That's make, great, there's man. points and counterpoints with both of those. Whew. And then I threw Jeter in there. And it just it doesn't bookend the way it has for Brady no. and Duncan. And then I'd name a soccer guy, but, I mean, if you told me Ronaldo had 30 cups or titles or zero, I, I wouldn't know. I'm, I'm just telling you, I, don't, I have no idea that they play for a championship every two weeks. I'm not, I'm not going to bring that up. I don't know. I just look at the, the place in football that Brady, he's never gone lower than, what, two at his position? I mean, since he's been, I mean, it's been a pretty good run at being the best in the game. Yeah, see, that's actually you know? a great point because Brady, I mean, there have been times now where Duncan and we've lost track of where yeah. he is in the hierarchy of NBA players. But and, P.J. made a great point today, man. He played 77 games in a year when a lot of guys didn't play all these games. And, and his statistics, they're managing his minutes. But if you, and you did the point, Ryan. I'm he doesn't really play less than 70 games okay. unless they're sitting him down. But if he played 36 minutes and you take his stats and you say, what would his, given what his, what his per minute stats are, we miss, we miss him because he's not as obvious. Brady's impossible to ignore. He plays the glamour position for a team that wins every year. The Spurs are easy to ignore because they're the sum of their parts, and he just isn't a – he's not a look-at-me guy. It's just 19 years to look at that. And last night was obvious. Last night's impossible to ignore. I'll, I'll take, take Brady and a heartbeat. That's fine. I'll take Duncan. I'll take Ronaldo. Somebody's going to fire in and say, give me Yarmir Yager. That guy's Still flying around, man. I'm not mad at him. <laughs> God bless him. Earlier today, Earlier today on SVP and Marcello. I can't wait to play this back because I did it and I don't know what happened. Um, We're talking pets. I said I wasn't into it and then you asked me a follow-up and it was... Apparently I slip into like an English, a very affected English accent, which wasn't intentional. It just happened, which when you talk for a living is, is a horrifying thing to think. Let's... I don't want to push this button, man. Let's let's hear what happened. So I don't I don't know what to do. And again, I know you're not a dog whisperer. Yeah, I think pets are stupid, so I don't can't add anything. You don't think you'll ever have a dog? Would you just become English? <laughs> uh, you, Are you on Top Gear? You know, what just happened. You don't fancy a, you don't fancy a, 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 a you don't fancy a little a little poodle, do you? Huh? Come here, dude. <laughs> that was so weird. What you just did? What happened? So I don't I don't know what to do. And again, I know you're not a dog whisperer. Yeah, I think pets are stupid, so I don't can't add anything. You don't think you'll ever have a dog? Wow, what? That's like an English accent. You don't think you'll ever have a dog? That's what I. That's exactly what I said. Exactly why I asked you what was going on. I have no. I have no idea. What if you're possessed by an old English salesman? Have you even thought about that? No, no. But it'll be. I mean, it's. I just hope it doesn't happen between the hours of one and four. But it, you don't know that you're not. I don't. I it can't be proven definitively that I'm not. I mean, but what you know, what if it happens? What you do? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what we'll do with it. Your second album, Shark Sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what happened. A simple review, two words. Um, so that was by accident. But Ryan is a uh, is a comic book fan on purpose. Still got them wrapped up in the uh, cellophane in a box? Well, I don't know. I wrap up money. What do you do with it? This <laughs> one's a gem mint 10. Yeah. Oh. Hey, guys, let me show you my Griffey oh, rookie. Do you have the first Punisher appearance? Yes, I do. <laughs> Keep going. More. How do, you have, do you have the first new costume of, of Spider-Man? The spectacular Spider-Man? Yes, I do. See, it's an alien costume. It started, you know, I mean. What's that one worth? Dude, in the condition I have it, I don't even know if you can price it. Secret Wars? Issue eight. Wow. Now, outsider is apparently your 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 spirit animal with that. He's too. Do you put? Do you have comic books too? Not at that level though. Like I mean, I'm just like blown away by it. What is? <laughs> what is it? What does Gem Mint Ten mean? That's obviously the best it can be. Best condition. Yeah, that's really what it comes down to. How rare is a Gem Mint Ten? Rare. Centering edges. Sometimes it's not even under your control. You can do whatever you want. You just get a bad, bad cut. 
Well, you don't remember the guy late at night trying to sell cards on those home shopping things? Now, I have, in my life, watched some horrible, horrible TV because when I bartend, I get home late at night, couldn't sleep, whack a sub, and just sit there. And The guy used to always scream Gem Mint 10 all the time. Do you not remember that? Does, does Outsider, you must have stayed up late. Dude, yeah. You're right. Remember? He always screamed Gem Mint 10. I, I, I didn't. I missed it. I missed that part. And the initials GM. And GMNT, right? Yeah. Who was your favorite comic book guy? Mysterio? No, I was a Spider Man guy too. Doctor Strange? Yeah. Uh, Spider Man? Mm hmm. Cool. I used to have real life web slingers. Believe it or not. In fact, I got to dig them out somewhere. What are you talking about? You should wear them, <laughs> wear them to work. <laughs> exactly. What? They weren't real, real life. But oh, you can't, shoot, you can't swing from building. building. I used to shoot silly string. Oh, okay. Out of a thing in your hand. Yep. That sounds like fun. You, and you still have those somewhere? Somewhere, I believe I still have those. You just made somewhere plural, which is even better. Somewheres, you have the real Spider-Man web slinger. They're not Gem Mint 10 right now, but if I can dig them up, I'll bring them in. Man, I work with some interesting dudes. Hope you've enjoyed today's program. I'm going to say something just remarkably stupid. SVP and Rosillo. <laughs> Miguel Cabrera leads the Detroit Tigers into Anaheim to face Mike Trout and the Los Angeles Angels. The pregame's at 7 Eastern, followed by first pitch at 8, Sunday on ESPN2 and on ESPN Radio.